Good morning. What another long story. But this is another one of those that Jesus has been um, encountering ordinary people in. This one, unlike the ones we've had in the last few weeks, where Jesus met Nicodemus in Galilee at night, and then he met this woman in Samaria, at the well in the middle of the day, and then he's met a blind man in Jerusalem. This one, though, is where he's getting involved again with a whole family and all their neighbours. And it's a very challenging reading, a particularly important reading as we approach Easter, because it talks to us about life and death and life again. The story, of course, goes where Jesus takes two days longer to respond to Martha's call to come urgently to be there with the family because her brother Lazarus is dying. And he doesn't. When things like this happen, how often do we say, but why don't you come when I need you? I think a lot about Martha. She's shown herself already to be very practical and sensible. I think she probably was the older sister in the family and that the younger one was Mary, the one who's currently in the story, collapsed in a heap in tears back at the house while Martha goes out to meet Jesus when he finally does come. Martha's been the one who thought about the meals that the disciples would need when they called at her house before. She was probably the one who sent the message. She's the one who thinks about the smell of a dead body after four days. I think being like that is hard work, especially when the person you think you can rely on doesn't come. But you see, Martha also is stronger in a much deeper way. She's the one who holds on to her faith even when she doesn't understand. And what this message teaches us is that although sometimes God feels very distant from us, the very distance is part of God's plan for something much bigger. What I'm trying to say about Martha is that at times of bleak uncertainty, times of loss, we continue to trust. She trusted Jesus, even though it must have looked to her as though he'd let her down, even though she must have felt a twinge of anger at him for not coming quickly. Surely if you'd come quickly, my brother would not have died, she says. She feels the need to tick him off, but he questions her. Have you lost your faith then? Is your faith all about you or is it in me? And she affirms, no, it's in you. I believe that even now, whatever you want, it will be done. I believe, she said, that you are the Messiah. And he talks to her about resurrection. And when we are in those bleak periods, let us let him teach us about resurrection. Let him speak to us about a picture far, far bigger than ourselves alone, in which we too are held, and where he is moving us towards resurrection, the resurrection of his own life in Easter. When she follows him and takes him to the tomb, and cautions him about his plan to open it up, she's not expecting to see resurrection of her brother, but she does, and then she understands. And I suspect that this story's message to us when we are in times of trouble and difficulty is hold fast, stand firm, trust him. He loves you, he loves everyone, and there is a vision, a plan, a much bigger salvation. You will be part of it. You will see it. The distance in the here and now is partial and short-lived. The eternal resurrection is coming.